Welcome to lesson nine, another sequencing game. We'll do this one and then lessons 10, 11, and 12, also sequencing games. And then in 13, we'll jump into our first grouping game. So let's take a look at this game and you'll see in the upper right, this is drawn from the June 2011 LSAT prep test 63. And then after the lesson, we'll talk about the top four upcoming fees to be aware of. It's expensive signing up for the LSAT, applying to law school. So you want to be aware of this early on, what uh, some of the costs you're going to have to pay. Let's take a look at the game. And if you don't have this practice test, just go down to our website here, crushthelsat.org, and you'll see a link to the book you need to buy from the LSAC, the creators of the LSAT. So what do we have here? Company is six vehicles, HLP, R, S, and V. So we have H, L, P, R, S, and V. Serviced from Monday through Saturday, one vehicle per day. And here are the rules. Rule one. At least one vehicle later than the week, then H. So what does that really mean? That means H, not last. That's what that really means. And as I'm sure you can guess, I'm going to put that in the diagram in a moment. How about rule two? R later in the week than V and earlier in the week than H. So we have R. And then this is really important. We want to make sure that we put our V on the correct side and our H on the correct side. Imagine what a problem it would be if we put those letters on the wrong side. So we want R later in the week than V. So V is going to go on the left over here. H is going to be on the right. And you can see right now we've already talked about H twice and we'll put two marks next to H and one um, looking at R, a dot next to R, a dot next to V. The more games you do, you might start to find it unnecessary to, to put those dots by the letters, but I think it's at least helpful early on. Rule three, either P or V on consecutive days or P and S on consecutive days, but not both. So what's that all about? Let's write it this way, PV, PV. Those are next to each other. We don't know which is to the left, which is to the right. Or P is next to S, but both can't be true. And let's put little dots up here. P we've now talked about in a rule, S, V we've now talked about twice. So we'll probably be combining those rules in some way. Rule four, S earlier in the week than P or earlier in the week than V, but not both. We've seen something very similar to this in an earlier game. S earlier than P, so we'll write that, or S earlier than V, I'll write the or here, but not both, meaning what? Meaning we have either an LSP situation or a PSL situation. Makes a lot of sense to create two diagrams, two different diagrams, two broad scenarios based on this rule. And now I know I'm going to create two diagrams, so let's get them started up here. So we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, all right, TH for Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So that's going to be scenario one, and then we're going to have another one. And one thing to point out, very important to write clearly on the test, and that may seem like kind of a silly thing to say, but you're going to find a lot of situations in which letters start to look alike, and you can't, at least when you're writing them very quickly, when you're sort of um, scribbling things down. And imagine if you get a question wrong just because your handwriting was poor. That happens all the time. And so I'm going to do the best I can to write clearly. And yes, it may take a little bit longer to make sure you write clearly, but it's well, well worth it at the end. Okay, let's combine our rules. Rules one and two, both talk about H. Rule one, I'm going to put up above Saturday, H with a minus sign. And I'll do that in world two as well. And I should note this is scenario two. H can't be Saturday, which means we have between Monday and Friday, this V, R, H, sequence. That's true in world one and in world two. So why don't I write this down here? All right. How about the next rules? So P is next to either V or S. Not quite sure how to put that in yet. Let's look at four. We have LSP or PSV. And apologies, I wrote that down incorrectly. Let me erase the V. It's LSP and PSL. Okay. So I have my LSP scenario and I have my PSL scenario. Can I combine that with rules one and two? Well, no, because none of those rules mention LS and P. Take a look at rule three. Can I bring that in somehow now? Well, let's take a look at the two scenarios. PV, is that even possible in scenario one? It's not. You can see that P is going to have to be farther, much farther to the right of the diagram than, than V. V will be pretty far to the left. So it looks like in the first scenario, S and P will have to be next to each other. And S will have to be on the left, we now know. So really, why don't I write it this way? S and P are going to be a block right next to each other. How about in the second scenario? P has to be next to V or S, but not both. Well, why don't I do this? I'm going to sort of circle VPS. 
They have to be, P has to be next to one, but not both. How about we go and circle rule three? It seems like we, just to be clear on that, we might wanna look back and forth at rule three, make sure we're applying it correctly. And why don't I just write an, an asterisk to note that we wanna go back and look at rule three from time to time. Okay, we've combined the rules, critical step. Now, next critical step, what deductions can you make right away? Is there anything that can't be true? Is there anything that can be true? Is there anything that must be true? And of course, what we're especially interested in are things that can't be true or must be true. Take a moment, see if there are any deductions you can make, things you can say with certainty, looking at the diagram, and then we'll come back and take a look. Scenario one, H can't be on Saturday. Immediately ask yourself, who can be on Saturday? Or maybe even must be on Saturday? P. Saturday has to be P. And we look at our rules, S has to be right next to P. Very helpful deduction to make early on. And if you didn't see that right away, that's fine. You would probably figure it out at some point, but the sooner you can find it, the more helpful making the deduction can be. So I'll look at the diagram. I'm now gonna cross out SP. L is gonna be basically a floater between Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And so what's going on in scenario one? V can be on Monday or Tuesday. R can be Tuesday or Wednesday. H can be Wednesday or Thursday. And then L can float around. How about scenario two? Major deduction we can make, who has to go on Saturday? Has to be L. And L, I'll cross L off down below. And at this point, who can go where? Well, it looks like Monday is going to be V or P. Has to be one of the two. And maybe I'll even write that down. Monday is V or P. Tuesday could also be V or P or S. We could have V on Monday, S on Tuesday. Not sure I want to write down any more in the diagram. We know that Monday is V or P. This is going to be our master sketch. We're going to underline it with a nice thick line. Not going to tamper with it. All right, let's take a look at the questions. Question one, acceptable order. So what do we do? Take the first rule, see what choices we can eliminate, then the second, etc. Rule one, H cannot go on Saturday. So with that, we can eliminate pretty quickly answer C. Why don't I pause for a moment? I'll let you take the next rule. V has to come before R, has to come before H. See what you can eliminate, then rule three, then rule four, and then we'll come back and take a look. Rule two gets rid of A. Rule three gets rid of D. Rule four gets rid of E. Answer B. Next question. Let's take on 13. I like to go to questions right away that give me some details. So we'll go to a new slide. 13, if neither P nor L serviced on Monday, which of the following must be true? Here, it looks like we don't even need to write anything down. Let's just take a look at the diagrams. Scenario one, P is already on Saturday, okay. If L is not on Monday, what must be true? V has to be on Monday. How about scenario two, L is on Saturday. How about P? If P can't be served on Monday, who is served? Again, V. So a lot of the time, no need to even write anything down. Just take a look at the diagram. Sometimes the correct answer will jump out at you. And of course, if it didn't, nothing wrong with starting to write things out, but always good to save time when we can. So that's answer C. How about question 14? Question 14, if L is not served on Saturday, each of the following could be true except, so four could be true, one cannot be true. So let's see, if L not serviced on Saturday, we know what, we are in scenario one. Question is each of the following could be true except, why don't you pause for a moment, take a look at these and we'll come back and take a look. So this one, not too difficult at all. You can see that answers A through D each of those could be true, but E, S cannot be on Wednesday. How about question 15? Here again, you take a look at the two scenarios. If S comes at some point before P, where are we? Scenario one. So just take a moment to go through the questions there and we'll come back. Answer A, L has the freedom to float around. L could be serviced on Wednesday. Answer A. How about question 16? If L serviced on Saturday, which of the following must be true? So a must be true question. Of course, we're in scenario two now. Nothing jumps out, so we'll just take the answer choices one by one. How about A? P earlier than R. Well, if you take a look here, it seems like P might have to come before R, but of course the VRH sequence and the PSL sequence are, are separate. So if you look at this and you're not quite sure, good idea to just write a tilde by it, write a tilde by A, and move on to the next choice, rather than sort of dwelling on one, any one answer choice. We want to use our time efficiently here. How about B? Must it be true that P appears earlier than S? Yes, absolutely. Answer B. All right, question 17, and then we'll jump back to question 12. 17, which of the following could be list of vehicles serviced on Monday, Tuesday, and Friday? Now, a very important point here. I said that when you set up the diagram, you want to be careful. Make sure you write neatly, very carefully, even if maybe it takes a little extra time, because if you made a little mistake, you could easily get a bunch of questions wrong for that reason. Well, a similar point, when you read the question, read the questions 
very slowly, very carefully. It would be very easy to read this question quickly and mistakenly think that the question was, list of vehicles serviced on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. No, it says Friday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. So very important to read the questions carefully. And so when we look at each choice, well, why don't we see if Tuesday and Wednesday work first? And then if they do work, then we'll take a look at Friday. Okay, answer A. On Tuesday and Wednesday, can you have P then H? Well, in scenario one, clearly not. How about scenario two? Well, there again, you can't. Why? Because if Tuesday were P and Wednesday were H, well, H has to be preceded by R and V. And of course, we can't place both V and R on Monday. So A is gone. How about B? P, R, and then later H. All right, scenario one, not going to work because P is serviced on Saturday. How about two? P and R. Can you do P, R? You could. V would come on Monday. We've satisfied our rule. I'm looking at the asterisk here. That P has to be next to either V or S. Here, if you had P on Tuesday, P would be next to V, R. And then S and H could be on Thursday and Friday. You could have SH or HS Thursday and Friday. So yeah, B works. And we could have drawn it out. There would have been nothing wrong with drawing it out if we were at all uncertain. Could have written, okay, P on Tuesday, R on Wednesday, L, of course, on Saturday. You look at the diagram. R has to be preceded by V. Look at the asterisk. Look at the rules on V and P. P has to be next to V or S, so that's fine. Where does S go? S could go on Thursday or Friday. H can go on Thursday or Friday. All right, and finally, question 12. Question 12, who cannot be serviced on Thursday? And you take a quick look here. Could H go on Thursday? Yes, so we cross out A. Could L go on Thursday? And I'm just looking at scenario one here. Yep, L can float around. P, in scenario one, it cannot. But how about scenario two? Well, on Thursday, if you had P on Thursday, you would then have S on Friday. With P right next to S, that uh, meets uh, the requirement of rule three, so that would be fine. And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, that's going to be VRH. So that is fine. How about D? Can S appear on Thursday? Not in scenario one, but how about in scenario two? S is on Thursday. If we were at all uncertain, that's fine. Just write it down. One, two, three, four, five, six, where we have L on Saturday. Could S go on Thursday? Could S go here? Well, who would go on Friday? That would be H. And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, V has to appear before R. P has to go in there somewhere. Rule says that P has to be next to either V or S. And yeah, either one of those, either one of those could happen. So D is fine. Take a quick look at answer E. Could V go on Thursday? Well, here we figured that out pretty early on. V has to be either on what? Monday or Tuesday. So answer E. So this, a really good sequencing game lesson to go through. You'll see I said up here, goal 11 minutes. Why? Well, first, there are seven questions on here, more than we've had on other games. We usually have five or six in a sequencing game. And second, I think rule three, the PV rule, PS rule, a little bit different to figure out and apply than some of the other rules we've seen in the past. So not a hard game, but more, I'd say, a, a time-consuming game. If you found the lesson helpful, be sure to click on the thumbs up button below. Be sure to subscribe, share it with your friends. And now we'll take a look at the top four list. Between now and the time you submit your applications, you're going to be charged lots of fees. And this list here and the links below them are all posted in the comments section underneath this video. First fee, your LSAT registration fee, $190 as of the time of this recording in 2019, plus about 100 more if you register late. And if you take a look at this link here on the LSAC website, it'll lay out the additional fees if, for example, you need to change the test date or the test location. The second link here, also worth a look, gives you some more information about fees. Number two, the LSAC's Credential Assembly Service, the CAS. What's that all about? Well, almost every ABA accredited law school expects you to send to the LSAC a copy of your transcripts and your letters of recommendation. The LSAC will then combine those with your LSAT score and put together a report. And you have to pay $195 for that, just for them to create the report. Then number three, for the LSAC to send your report to a law school, you're going to pay $45 per school. And then, of course, last but definitely not least, just applying to school, depending on the law school, fees usually between $75 and $100 per school. So just to do the quick math here, suppose you apply to 10 schools. You could be paying $1,000 just to apply to have LSAC send your score report. That's $45 per school, so that's another $450. Creating the report itself, as we said, $195, and then signing up for the LSAT, $190. So we're talking $1,835. So you definitely want to plan your budget right now. The good news for some people, if you take a look at this link below, some people will be eligible for fee waivers from the LSAC. Of course, you'll have to provide them with some information, perhaps uh, tax returns, for example. The good news is that if you qualify for fee waivers from the LSAC, law schools will generally give you a fee waiver on their application fees as well. 
So something to look into. Next lesson, lesson 10, we're going to take on another sequencing game. Again, we're doing these in approximate order of difficulty. You'll see down here exactly where to go on the YouTube channel and look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.